studied um, asteroids, and the mentor for this project was Marco Michelli, who is an IFA grad student here in the gallery. And so, Ashley Martin is a student from uh, the island of Maui, and Stephanie Spear is a returnee who has been here for two, third year. So she's three years, very good. Um, and Okay, so the name of, the, of our project is called Rocks of the Rainbow Asteroid Classification Using Photometry. And as you know, I'm Ashley. And I'm Stephanie. Yeah, I'm sorry, my voice is kind of losing, so if you can understand me, just let me know. Um, so anyway, our project, um, basically what we did was we used um, images taken through multiple filters to classify an asteroid as either an S group or a C group asteroid. And then we compared the asteroidal spectrum with a meteorite spectrum that we obtained. Okay, so the big question is what exactly are asteroids? Well, they're rocky or metallic objects orbiting the sun. They range in size from like a thousand kilometers to, this, to about the size of pebbles. Most of the um, asteroids are contained in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. They're basically the material that's left over from the formation of the solar system. Okay, so our, there are many different ways to classify asteroids. And the way um, we're going to discuss is physical classification of the asteroids. The two most general groups are S group and C group. Um, S-group asteroids contain silicates, which is basically silicone and oxygen, and they absorb wavelengths of about a thousand nanometers, or um, in the infrared zone. And C-group asteroids are carbonaceous asteroids, and they have a relatively straight spectrum. In other words, they don't absorb the infrared waves. Okay, so our method for testing these is we took images of the asteroids and the standard star with multiple filters. The standard star um, we got was relatively similar to the sun because we had to take the numbers that we got from the, from the star because it's similar to our sun. And the asteroids, they, they kind of make like uh, reflections, so we had to take away the light that we get from the reflections. So we obtained the photometry using Myra on the images, and then we measured the flux of both the asteroid and the star. We calculated the ratio between the, flux, uh, the, yeah, the fluxes of the asteroid and the star, and then we plotted the ratio between the fluxes. Okay, so this is the data that we got after going through that process. And the asteroid that we did this um, for is called Tantalus, and it is a near-Earth asteroid. And so basically, this is our graph, and it is a scatter plot, as you can see. On the x-axis, we have the wavelength in nanometers, and on the y, we have the normalized flux ratio. Basically, what that is, is um, it's the ratio of the two fluxes, as Ashley was saying, but it's been normalized so that the... Um, the value for the green, um, that the value from the green filter becomes one, and everything else is around that value. So as you can see, we have a gradual slope that goes up and peaks right around the visual um, red wavelength, so the color that we see is red, and um, then it goes back down right over here, which is um, the infrared zone, and this is um, typical of an S-type asteroid. And so the result for this test was that Tantalus was in fact an S group. Even if the dip in the infrared section was not as significant as we had expected, the result does confirm the effectiveness of the flux calibration method that we have used. And we are planning on using this method for all the other unknown types of asteroids in the future. Okay, so after finding um, the spectra of our um, asteroid Tantalus, we wanted to do kind of a more hands-on thing um, with this spectral analysis, 
And so um, we decided to check if the absorption of infrared waves that we saw um, in the S-type asteroids is really caused by the presence of silicates in that asteroid. And to do this, we found the spectrum of a meteorite known to con contain silicates. So the method for this one was we used a spectrometer with an optical fiber. That um, is the, um, one of the equipment that helped us to find the spectrum of the asteroid or meteorite that we had used. We um, used the average of like multiple acquisitions and then we calibrated using the sunlight reflecting off of a cloud. Now that's the um, same method that we had used in the beginning with the sun and the meteorite. We're just replacing it, I mean the sun and the asteroid, and we're just replacing those two objects with the cloud and the meteorite. Okay, so here's our meteorite data, and again we have the wavelength on the x and the normalized flux ratio on the y-axis, and as you can see, we do have a slope going up, although it's not quite as gradual as the um, Tantalus's slope, but um, it's still no visible, and we still have our peak at the visible red wavelength. And it does come down um, in the infrared, so we um, can see that um, even though it's a meteorite, it still does have the um, dip in the infrared. And so the results for this part was the spectrum has a dip in the infrared, confirming that the dip in the infrared, uh, in, excuse me, sorry, the, di uh, the dip in the infrared is caused by silicates. The dip is more pronounced, probably because the Tantalus's data is from the surface. Chondrite is from the interior. So what we did was we took a slice of one of the meteorites and we tested the inside of the rock. Okay, so um, that was the um, gist of our project, and um, we just had a little surprise that we wanted to throw in there. Um, while we were um, surveying some near-Earth asteroids, we came across an Im several images with this fuzzy object in there, and I have some friends who want to help me tell you guys what we found. Stand up. Come on, stand up, stand up. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. So um we did find a comet and um our names all of our names were um submitted um as um observers of the comet's activity so we're uh, published now. <laughs> Well, for a special thanks, we'd like to start off with Marco Michelli for being the most awesome mentor ever. Thank you so much. And we'd also like to thank Mary Kataoka for directing High Star. <laughs> J.D. Armstrong for helping us with false observing. Mr. DeVay for helping us revise and practice our presentation and for helping with the meteorite analysis. Mike Nasser for supporting us and providing the equipment for the meteorite spectral analysis. Heather Kaluna for co-mentoring us and helping with the meteorite analysis. Katie Whitman for supporting us. Our teachers, Mr. Kawashigawa, Mr. Baka, and Ms. Fajardo. The Starkey family for allowing us to use their telescope. Our knowledgeable speakers. And everyone else who has supported the High Star program behind the scenes. And finally, to all our High Star peers, whose sense of humor always brought a smile to our faces. Thank you. <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie, where did you get the sample for the meteorites from? 
Oh, the meteor examples were, um, we borrowed them from Dr. Gary Huss, who is um, also in the post building, so we'd like to thank him as well.